President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. It's a fact. And Chris Christie, honest to God, your claim that Donald Trump is motivated by vengeance and grievance would be a lot more credible if your entire campaign were not based on vengeance and grievance against one man. And if people at home want to see a bunch of people blindly bashing Donald Trump without an iota of vision for this country, they could just change the channel to MSNBC right now. But I'm not running for president of MSNBC. I am running for president of the United States. That was Vivek Ramaswamy going after former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie's campaign strategy during last night's debate. Christie attacking Ramaswamy's, quote, amateur tendencies, comparing him to former President Obama. Watch this. I've had enough already tonight of a guy who sounds like ChatGPT standing up here. And the last person in one of these debates, Brett, who stood in the middle of the stage and said, what's a skinny guy with an odd last name doing up here was Barack Obama. And I'm afraid we're dealing with the same type of amateur standing in stage tonight. All right. Joining me now is former Georgia Congressman Doug Collins. Doug, good morning. Oh, lots to talk about okay. here. I think the biggest question really is, did, did anybody on the stage, in your opinion, we're going to get to that Chris Christie comment, really move the needle enough uh, to, to jump in the polls uh, when it comes to the former president, Donald Trump, who still has the big lead? Well, good morning, Cheryl, and good morning, everybody. Uh, look, I, I don't think they probably moved a lot. There'll be some movement here, but I think uh, I heard it earlier, and I think, you know, they mentioned an earlier interview Todd had talked about, which all, everybody said Georgia did sort of as expected. I think the interesting part here for me, though, is when you look at the details of this debate, I think whether it was lack of specifics or everybody else, folks, let's just get over it. I mean, lack of specifics in a minute and a half answer. As somebody who's done many, many of these debates, there's only so much you can get in, and they're all told, here's what you need to do. I think the interesting part for me, though, was if I was Ron DeSantis this morning, no matter what I said and how I did it, Vivek Ramaswamy took the arrows. He also took the time. He also got mentioned enough. Uh, if you're some of the other candidates on the stage, it tells me that they believe that, that Vivek actually was the more uh, challengeable candidate at this point, and they went after him. So it, it was a twofold aspect. Everybody thought DeSantis would get attacked. He really didn't get attacked at all. He sort of performed as he normally does. But, you know, the question from the other candidates was why go after Vivek? It was an easier target, and everybody else just sort of got to play their own uh, standard campaign stump speech. Well, you heard that soundbite that we played going into you, uh, and you looked at, you know, Chris Christie. I mean, the guy likes yep. to, to throw punches, and his first victim was <laughs> Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, in particular, going after him for that, that comparing himself to Barack Obama, kind of stealing that line. That was one issue, the chat, GTP, chat GPT line <laughs> that came and hit Ramaswamy. I mean, but did any of that really land? And I think my bigger question here is, is there something in the internal polls right now, Doug, that we're not seeing, that the candidates on that stage last night are seeing, that tells them that Vivek Ramaswamy is a bigger threat than we realized to them? I'm I, probably in the polls. I mean, they're seeing a guy who has absolutely zero name ID six months ago now is, you know, second place in some of the national polls, third place. But I think if you really wanted to know where the interest uh, in the attacks on uh, Vivek came from, listen to the crowd. Just listen to the crowd last night when, when Christie did attack him. They were booing. They were, and many of them were very hostile toward the, the attacks. Because, look, I think this also puts a different spotlight on Vivek. He actually now has to go out and talk about his stance on Israel, his stance on Ukraine. These are things that people may not have seen before, but now see it on the very front stage. And now he's going to have to talk about it. But they like the way he talks. They like the way he related. And when we talk about economy, and I heard this earlier on what y'all were talking about, Bidenomics, nobody knows what Bidenomics is nobody cares what Bidenomics is because they don't like Joe Biden, so they don't like Bidenomics. They just know that it's hard on them every day buying the stuff they need. When's a candidate going to sit there and just say, you know, is Tim Scott tried, others tried, but instead of giving your, here's my five point plan, hey, look, I know you're suffering. Here's what we got to do the spending's bad, and go at it from that angle. And he's doing that. The others sort of played the normal role, it seemed like last night, which is normal for these debates. Well, you know, DeSantis did come out and talk about this, and I thought this was interesting, you know, when it came to Bidenomics and reversing Bidenomics in the country. And he did say, we cannot succeed as a country if you're working hard, but you can't afford groceries, a car, or a new home, while Hunter Biden can make hundreds of thousands of dollars on lousy paintings. Uh, yeah, but, uh, and again, I, I'm glad he's went after it, but again, what is the specific there? 
you just told us everything we already know. And okay. I think that's what comes out of debate sometimes. So, yeah, we know that the prices are high. We know that energy price, and it's Bidenomics, and we'll take a hit at Hunter Biden. All perfect debate techniques to make a uh, five-minute showing or, or a 30-second hit. The question became, though, is, is uh, they'll turn around, and so people who are going through every day say, okay, what does that mean? Does that mean that we're going to actually you know, produce more energy here so that our gas prices will come down, as opposed to a president who just cut production in the United States when gas prices are already higher? It's got to be a little bit more specific and be aimed at the people on what they have. Don't tell them what they already know. Tell them this is what we understand, but here's how we can actually fix it. Use a 30-second soundbite for one good point instead of a 45-second soundbite for a little bit of everything. Well, you know what, Doug? I'll tell you what, that might be Ramaswamy then, because he did say when it came to energy policy, um, I would unlock American energy, drill frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear, uh, put people back to work and not pay them to be at home anymore. Yeah. Well, it makes sense, uh, Cheryl. I mean, think about this. People are wanting to hear what, you know, we're having an energy crisis here. We're having gas prices go up. You know, you're pushed toward electric vehicles and everything, yet we have a grid that can't sustain uh, the electric progression that we're going with vehicles. And you're not dealing with stuff like nuclear. You're not dealing with the other issues of an all-encompassing uh, energy plan. I think that would be a, an area where people could actually look at that and, and say, hey, this is at least a, a vision I have not heard before. Um, but I think this is where it's going to be good. At the end of the night, though, Donald Trump, you know, was the uh, probably the unspoken winner here because it made everybody else have to fight each other while Donald Trump was still leading massively in the polls and mm -hmm. not having to, you know, not being engaging here. And who came out, you know, sort of the second place here? Yeah. We'll just have to see how the polls shake out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's others. Haley did okay. There's others who did had their moments. But the question is, was there a moment that said, hey, here's my alternative to Donald Trump in these polling. All right, Doug Collins, thank you so much for getting up so early. Appreciate it, Doug. It's good to see you. Okay. All right. Good we'll to see back. you too. Take care. All right. We'll be